In this video, I'm going to show you a full beginner's guide to Celeramp and Keepa, which are two foundational tools to Amazon FBA product research that I use every single day in my own seven-figure Amazon business. So sit back, relax, enjoy the video. Let's talk Celeramp and Keepa. As well as before we get into the video, if you want more free Amazon value, I encourage you to join our free Discord down below. There's over 40,000 Amazon sellers and there's lots of good conversations, live streams, guides in there. So definitely check that out. It's completely free. It's linked below. Let's get into it. By the end of this video, I want you guys to have a really good idea of how to use Seller Amp and Keepa. So you actually go, can go ahead and get each of them and get started with product research today. Because watching YouTube videos is great, but implementing on your own is where you're going to learn a lot of the additional stuff that's really going to help you scale. But obviously videos like this are great in terms of seeing the basics because you need to watch stuff like this so you can really start to learn the basics. Right here, in terms of cost, so Keepa and Celeramp each cost about $20 per month. Celeramp you could actually get a completely free trial of right here. I definitely recommend having both, and I do use each and every, uh, both of them in my own business every single day. We see we're here on a product page on Amazon. Immediately on this product, this is the buy box right here. If you don't know what that is, that's really important. That's basically like the, the buy it now option we can see as a customer as well right here. This is where we want to get as a seller. Now, the buy box does rotate a bunch, so it's like as long as you're priced competitively and for the most part an FBA seller, you're going to get sales right here. So. We'll start out taking a look at Keepa right here. We can see seller amps over here on the right side as well. We're going to talk about that. It's basically just the, the beginner's guide to both of them. Right here we can see, okay, so we got two Keepa charts right here. It might show three for you when you got it set up, but you definitely want to take out um, and you just want to make it the two charts. Right here, um, so I'm just focusing on these top two right here, the only ones I'm showing. I'm going to go ahead and take out all the lines here and just go ahead and explain um, one by one what they actually mean. Right here, so, okay, sales rank right here. So that's the green line that I just popped up. That's how we tell demand on Amazon. We can see legitimately over the seven years that this product's been around, what sales rank the product has been. We can see uh, over the last year, that it's like they took it away in January and December for some reason right here, but the current sales rank is 25,000, which is pretty low. Anything below like 100,000, it means it's consistently selling. Anything below 50,000 means it's it's decently selling. And then below like 10,000, 20,000 is where you get into the really good products. So this is selling a decent amount right here. So the sales rank we can see, it can change seasonally throughout the year, seasonally throughout the years. We can see like back in May 2019, it was like a 75,000 rank. And I guess cereal's got a little bit more popular right here. Now it's, it's pretty decent right here. The buy box price, which is the pink line we're about to see, um, is that buy it now option up here as well. So that's uh, the number you're most focused on in terms of what you're going to actually be able to price and then ultimately sell your product for. Because it's no use being on a product if you're priced too high and you're not going to get the buy box right there. On that, um, we can go ahead here and select Amazon as well. That would be if Amazon was competing on something like this, which in this case they're not. Right here, um, I don't like having the new price selected. It's like automatically selected. I'm not really looking at the blue line right there. Um, third party FBA, that's these orange triangles right here. The more orange triangles you see, the more an item selling. If you just go on your own and look up something that's like in a million sales rank, look at the Keepa chart, there's not gonna be a lot of orange triangles. But if you look at something with like a 5K rank and you see the, there's gonna be a ton of orange triangles right here. So the more orange triangles you see, the more it's selling. And that represents the lowest priced FBA seller right there. We'd see sometimes it's different. Sometimes the buy box will be a little bit lower or be a little bit higher um, than the FBA seller. Like we can see that at, at this case back in September, the buy box was 20 bucks about and the lowest FBA was 15. That was probably due to a seller that had just shipped his inventory in and his delivery dates were pretty far out right there. So that's probably why it wasn't shown right there. I don't recommend having third party FBM select. Like it's not super important because you're going to be FBA in most of your inventory anyway, right there. And then on this bottom chart, um, you can feel free to select the rating and review count. I don't love having that selected. It's kind of cool seeing the review count and that the more reviews something's getting and if it's consistently getting reviews, it means it's selling more and more right here. And then the new offer count is the actually competition right here. Now this is important because a lot of you guys comment on my videos asking, okay, how much competition is too much? And there's some listings that have 200 sellers and everyone's still making money on them. And the way I think about it is competition's only going to be an issue if it's reflected in price, right? Say the competition's skyrocketing in the last month on something, there's a very good chance that the price is then going to go down. So don't necessarily look at competition being too much, look at the price action to ultimately decide if the competition is being too much right there. So just take some time and look through like obviously watch you know a bunch of videos 
on YouTube, but just go scroll through those on your own and you'll start to get different trends and see keep it charts how they operate and that if the competition skyrocks, there's a very good chance the next couple weeks following that, the price is going to go down right there as well. So that's like really the basics of Keepa. Um, there's some more stuff you can look into, like right here, data is pretty helpful. You can look at this product details right here and see the sales ranks over time and the buy box price over time, which is pretty helpful. And then as well as some other data, I don't really look at like sales ranks drops or anything like that. Um, but I do like this buy box data as well as the sales rank data right here to gauge the demand over time. Like the average sales rank over 180 days, over 90 days, stuff like that. As a beginner, you're probably not going to be buying too much quantity of stuff. So therefore, I would really focus on like the three month charts for the most part. When you're someone like me who's been in the game a couple years and you're starting to buy 50 of something, 100 of one product, you then do need to focus on the overall data more because there's a good chance you're gonna have that inventory a lot longer and be looking to replenish it right there. But on initial test orders, when you're a newer seller, you're buying 10 of stuff, buying five of stuff, just worry about the few month chart in my opinion. So that's like pretty much the basics of Keepa right there. I have a full Keepa tutorial on my channel if you want like a 20 minute, minute version, it's linked um, in the description as well right here. But in terms of just like foundationally getting started, that's easy enough in terms of what you wanna see right there. Take some time, go look at 50 Keepa charts in the next hour after this and you can see right there. It's pretty important, but Keepa, 20 bucks a month right there. You're gonna need both these Keepa and Selleramp in my opinion. Right here, um, how Selleramp works right here. So Selleramp has a Chrome extension and a mobile app. Keepa actually has a mobile app as well. So if you're doing retail arbitrage, do the, basically the exact same functions on here. Um, Selleramp is really important in terms of figuring out what you're actually gonna make on an item or not make after the Amazon fees, the shipping to Amazon, sales tax, product cost, everything like that. What you want to do is go to selleramp.com right after you get your free trial, go to settings and then uh, scroll down on the left and you're going to see where you'll add in your MISC fee, aka your sales tax percent because each state's going to be different. Right there, for example, me, I ship to New Hampshire which is sales tax free so I don't actually pay any sales tax right there but someone always comments on that. Add in your sales tax percent or your prep center cost, whichever is applicable to you or both. Um, in your settings on sellerramp.com right here. But basically, yes, yeah, so like now I can see, okay, say we pay two bucks for this product right here, right? We're gonna make $3 profit and that's after everything. That's after shipping to Amazon, Amazon fees, product cost, sales tax, prep center cost, everything like that um, right here. And we can see going over here, we can see what uh, the product actually, like how big it is, how much it weighs and everything. We can see a little bit more in the description. We could open up the Amazon product page if we wanted, even though we're already on that in this case. Right here, we could go ahead and Google it in terms of taking a look for it right here. We can see at uh, Walmart, it's five bucks right there. So we could pay five bucks right here. We would probably just about break even right here. So that obviously doesn't make sense to do. Right there, I'd recommend doing a minimum ROI of about 30% right there. Uh, so this is pretty important right here. We can also open the SaaS web app right here and take a look at all the data laid out here as well. Um, well I'm not a huge fan of that, but you can use it if you want to. I mainly just use the Chrome extension. Right here, now down here is the prop calculator on Selleramp. This is pretty straightforward in terms of you can really easily qualify the velocity, the estimated sales per month, any alerts of like there's IP, IP history, private label, meltable, anything like that. As well as you can see the sale price, buy box, you can enter in your cost to calculate your potential profit for an item as well as you can see the offer summary right here. I don't really uh, focus too much on the offer summary, summary right there. Ranks and prices, I don't look at too much. Right, although it does help, I just typically see a lot of that data pr pretty quickly. Right here on that alerts panel, looking mainly up there as well, but you can take a look at that too if you want. Uh, we've got a mini Keepa chart right here. Um, if you're like really bootstrapping, you just start out with seller and use this function right here, but I definitely recommend having both. Um, right there, prop calculator. Now this is important right here. Say you were looking to FBM a product, right? The current numbers on seller up are only the FBA offers, right? You could go ahead and toggle this to FBM and then enter in your FBM shipping cost right here to go ahead and actually gauge that. And you could estimate your FBM shipping costs by plugging in the dimensions of the box and the weight of the product into Pirate Ship if you were looking to do that. For some that's one pound, I typically just estimate like 10 bucks or one pound or above. If it's below one pound, it's gonna be like four to six depending on what it actually weighs, which you could estimate on pirateship.com right there okay uh google sheets you're not going to need that as a beginner but it is helpful to actually go ahead and organize your products as well offers now this is important seeing the competition right here and actually going ahead and using seller to find more products right here via reverse sourcing so what's beautiful is that amazon makes it completely public in terms of what items other sellers are selling right here so 
I can go ahead and open up this seller right here who I can see has 1800 reviews, right? Because they have 1800 reviews, I know they're making a decent amount of money right here. And now within the storefront stocking feature on seller app, we can see, okay, what brands does the seller carry, right? What categories does the seller carry? right here and there's no secrets like now we can go ahead and look for these products so what i would do is say i'm looking through another seller right here i would scroll through and look for products that meet my criteria in terms of like mainly like to do stuff that's above 20 bucks this is close enough right here it's uh 20 uh it's buy box and for 20 bucks the bsr is 8k uh there's 26 offers and the max cost is six bucks so i would open up this as i was scrolling through here and typically i would filter into brands like to carry or categories like to carry specifically and we would take a look at these okay anything else fit that requirement so it's selling a lot of cheap stuff right here let's see oh here we go yeah right there right here looks good 45k rank look good on that okay now we can see okay keep a chart price is pretty stable off count's gone up a bit as of late so there's a decent chance this goes down a little bit more in the future right and my max cost is at a 2009 buy box right there my max cost is about six bucks right here. So I can just go ahead and one click Google this to take a look on uh, seller amp right here, then check over on Google and see if any products match. You always want to make sure it's the right product on there. Like we can see in this case, yeah, pack of three. Um, these are definitely too cheap right here. This might be wholesale, I don't know, but uh, we can see 33 price stable on these guys. You can take a look at this as well right here. We got a, what's this? Uh, two pack pack of three retail packaging right here. So we want to find these for like four bucks a unit right here Trustables, okay Let's see Carmel macchiato, okay six by oh on Amazon themselves. Let's see 12 from Walmart. No, okay See and this is the game basically in terms of just looking up looking up this stuff finding products that meet your velocity criteria and then going out and taking a look for those items at profitable prices Making sure you're getting about a 30% ROI on that right there. Let's see right here. Buy 10, get 7% off right here. Four pack. Okay, yeah, buy five, save 3%. Yeah, five bucks a piece. If we pay five bucks, we would just about probably lose 10 bucks a unit right there. So that doesn't look good on there. And that's the thing, like different products are on sale at different times. So it's going to take a bunch of work on your end to find those initial products. But then once you've been doing it, for six months the way I have, you can really start to find some stuff pretty consistently. Like I can sit down and easily make 100, 200, 300 bucks profit an hour in terms of the profitable items I'm finding and everything. This is expensive for a four pack of cereal. I could totally see this being good right here. Let's see, four pack, maple. Now we want apples and cinnamon right there. Let's see. Okay, we got the blue on the side right there. Okay, oh, that's on eBay. eBay, let's see, Walmart right here. Let's see, I'm definitely on a good trail right here. We can DoorDash these. <laughs> Source them on DoorDash, let's see. Okay, let's see. Now the packaging is slightly different right here. It, you would definitely wanna make sure the labels perfectly match up if you were gonna do that. I'm not a huge fan of uh, of doing that stuff um, on there, absolutely not right there, but that would definitely make sense if the labels do match that is in fact the same product right there. Let's see, 8.7 ounces. Let's see, yeah, 10 point, okay, so, yeah, that's not even the same size right there. But either way, you guys get the idea in terms of what this looks like. It's called reverse sourcing. I have a bunch of videos like winning product reveals and stuff on my channel that I think will help with that. But that is the basics of Keepa and Celeramp for Amazon product research. Uh, definitely make sure you get a Celeramp free trial, get a Keepa subscription if you're interested in doing this stuff and everything. Hope you guys have a great day. Check out the links in the description for more videos. See you guys in the next one.